guys, it's Leslie here from Hammer and Stay North Shore, and I just wanted to say thank you for purchasing one of our cornhole hammer at home kits from us. Um, so in your kit, you got a brown bag and an instruction list, and on that instruction list, it tells you to come and watch this video so you can watch me do my cornhole set step by step and visually see it as well. So the first thing that we are going to do is that we want to get out our sanding block and give the cornhole set a good sand so there's not any rough edges, especially all around the edges. You don't want to get any splinters or anything like that. Um, so we're going to start by sanding, then we're going to move on to staining our boards, and then we're going to let the stain dry and we're going to place our stencils on our boards and paint them in. So super excited, hope you guys have fun. Maybe you're gonna make it a family affair, you're doing it by yourself or you're doing it with a friend or a partner, um, but can't wait to see all the pictures afterwards of your finished product and you guys just enjoying your personalized DIY um, cornhole kits this summer and for many future years, so. Okay, so I am just going to take this sanding block and go around the edges and make sure that the cornhole kits themselves and sets are nice and smooth before I put on the stain. So once you got your cornhole boards all sanded to your liking, you want to take a paper towel and just wipe them down and get all the wood shavings out of the way and cleared off so that when we stain, they won't get in the stain. Okay, so now it's time to stain. We're going to take one of the larger orange sponges that I provided. I would also put on gloves for this as staining is definitely going to be the messiest part. The stain will come off of your skin and your hands no problem with soap and warm water, but it will not come off your clothes. So please, while you're doing this staining and painting, wear clothes that if you get any stain or paint on them, you won't be upset by it. So the stain comes in the largest container um, and it's labeled stain. And we're gonna use this large sponge. We're gonna dip it into the stain and we're gonna spread it all over the um, cornhole board. Now, you may need to do two or three coats of the stain, depending on how dark you want the stain color to be. It's totally your preference. We've given you plenty of stain so that you can make that two or three coats no problem. Okay, so the black board right here has three coats on it, and I'm stopping with that. Three coats should really do enough and get rid of any of the streakiness. And this white board here, I've been letting dry for probably 10, 15 minutes. And as you can see, it's still streaky. So between your second and third coat, you definitely want to let it dry for a good 10 to 15 minutes. If it's sunny out and you're doing this outside, it's gonna dry a lot faster. If you have a hair dryer um, and you're inside doing it, you can also hair dry it to help it dry faster. But the third coat is really gonna help you smooth it all out and get rid of all of these streaky lines so it looks a lot more solid. Now, if you want to see some of the um, grain of the wood coming through, you can stop at two coats. It's totally up to you. So once your last coat of stain dries, which I did three coats on these, 
and I let them dry overnight, but you don't have to let them dry overnight. You can just let them dry for a good 20 to 30 minutes or use a blow dryer to help speed up the process. Also, if they're in the sun, they're definitely gonna dry a lot faster. We're gonna just do a little sanding. If you feel the top part of your board, where your stencil's gonna go, and it feels a little rough, you wanna take your sanding block and just sand it down. You don't have to go really hard, but you want this to be nice and smooth, just like that, for when you put on your stencil. Okay, so your stencil may not take up your entire board, so you kinda wanna lay it out and figure out where exactly you want it to go on your board. Once you know, we're gonna actually flip this over so that the grid side is faced up. Now, if you have a larger stencil, you may wanna do this with someone else and not do it on your own, so that when you go to put it on and it sticks, the two of you can hold it together and line it up. So you're gonna peel back this grid. And you're gonna peel back the grid, exposing blue sticky stencil. You're just gonna start from one side and go all the way to the other nice and slow so that no blue comes up on this grid. If blue does come up, you're just, just like this. See how the blue came up? I'm just gonna press it back down and keep going. So if you go nice and slow, you'll catch anything that tries to come up on it and you won't rip your stencil. Okay, so now this is your sticky stencil and we're gonna flip this over and we are going to place it onto our board. Okay, so I held on this side and my husband held on that side and we just placed it down where we wanted it. And now we can use our hand or a spatula from the kitchen and we're just gonna really press down on our stencil. It's okay if you get some crease marks where there isn't um, your design or even on your design because you can use a spatula to really push it down. Once you have your stencil where you want it, we are going to take this white transfer tape, tape and peel it off, making sure that our stencil stays stuck down. And again, we're just gonna go nice and slow from one side to the other. Okay, so once you have the transfer tape off of your stencil, like here on the black one, the white one still has the transfer tape down, but the black one has it off, we are going to start painting in our design. So you're going to take your paint color of choice and you're going to take this orange little square sponge. We're going to dip it in the paint and scrape it off because we don't want a lot of paint on the sponge when we start painting, it's gonna take probably two to three coats of painting in order to get it the color and consistency you want. But you wanna start light, because if you go too heavy, the paint will seep underneath the stencil and can cause bleeding. So then when you peel up the stencil, you're gonna have a lot of blotch marks, and you don't want that. If you want nice crisp lines, you dip it in, scrape it off, and start really light, and we're just gonna take our sponge and we're just gonna dab where 
we want the color to go. Again, the paint will probably take two or three coats to get it the consistency you want. If you're doing it light enough, you'll still see some of your background color um, through the paint for this first coat. So you're gonna paint everywhere you want that color. If you're switching to a new color, switch to a new color. And then as you go up, the ones on the bottom will dry. And once those are dry, you can go back and do your second coat of paint. So as you can see, this is my first coat of paint and it's still very light. You can see some of the black that's still behind it for the stain. I'm gonna let this dry for probably two to five minutes and then go over it with a second coat. Okay, so here is what my first coat of paint looks like with the white background just so you can get an idea of how light I went for the first coat. And then over here, this is going to be my second coat. So I'm letting this dry before I do a third and final coat on the black. Okay, so when your paint is totally dry, um, if it's after the second or the third coat of paint that you do, but you get it to the consistency and color that you like, you need to make sure that it dries. So I would give it anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes or hit it with a blow dryer to help speed up that process. And then it's time to peel off the stencil. So when you peel off the stencil, make sure you go nice and slow. You don't wanna rip it off like you're waxing or anything like that. Um, but if the stencil breaks on you, don't worry, just keep going. And if you need to pick out any little parts, you can use tweezers, a toothpick, or your fingernails to pick out any parts that are left. Okay, and there it is. Now, as you are peeling up your stencil, if you notice that maybe some of the stain or background color comes up with the peeling of the stencil or you got paint anywhere that you didn't want it, you can just use a brush and dip it in your stain and just go over it or use the sponge that you use to do any sort of touch-ups that you need. Congrats! you are done making your cornhole kit. Hope you had a lot of fun and hope you have even more fun playing with them and showing them off to everyone um, this summer, fall, and many years to come. So just a, a quick few tips on keeping them looking great while you use them and play with them. So obviously as you throw the bean bags on them, you could notice some paint chips here and there. Um, you can always use touch up and, and repaint if you need to but I suggest you get some fast drying polyurethane spray from Home Depot, Lowe's, Amazon, and just give it a good spray. This is gonna protect it against water spills or maybe some light mist. It is not gonna protect it against heavy downpour or lots of rain. So when you're not using your cornhole kits, I really strongly suggest you either put them away or cover them up um, from the weather elements so that they don't get stuck in a rainstorm or bad weather and get ruined. Um, I cannot guarantee that this is going to protect it against bad weather or rain. What I can say is that I use this 
to protect my outdoor signs and um, it does help it against any sort of water spillage or light rain um, but not downpour. Usually my signs are underneath a porch so they're not in direct weather or rain. Um, but I definitely would spray these. I'm going to spray them myself. You can also go out and get, um, it's called like semi-gloss uh, polyurethane paint. Um, and you can paint it on. Um, that may make it shiny, so it all depends on what look you wanna go for. But I definitely would spray it with this to start and to make sure that when you're not using the boards, they're either covered, protected, or put away just in case there's a random rainstorm coming. So thank you so much for um, picking us to do one of your amazing DIY cornhole boards with. I can't wait to see pictures. Please take some, send them to me at hammerandstainns at gmail.com or you can message me on Facebook or Instagram. I would love to see how they came out. Bye.